Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Pro Basic version of GT Omega's cockpit lineup. Now, this is part one of a two part video review series called The Build. I'll also be making a second review video called The Setup, so make sure you check that one out also. At $450 ship, this looks to be a pretty good deal on paper. Time to put it through the SRG review process and see if it is. So, let's get to it. All right, so let's take a look at what comes with the kit as far as what we're gonna be using to get everything assembled for this cockpit. First off, it comes with a couple of tools. The first one is this funky looking thing. <laughs> and it has a 13, I think it's a, a 10, let's see, we got a 13, I think a 14, Maybe that's a 15, and we got an 8 and a 10 as far as this multi-wrench goes. So, yeah, it's a pretty crazy looking device here. And I imagine you still have to have some swing room to be able to manipulate this because it's not like one thin wrench. But I won't be using this, obviously. I'll, I'll be using my own wrenches. And it gives us a couple of Allen wrenches, an M6 and an M4. I believe this is an M4, yes, M4. So we get a couple of these with it, but I'll be using my own Allen wrenches. Right, so we get a bag of these guys, and it's kind of neat the way they've actually individually wrapped them. <laughs> and they're, they're, of course, the knobs that we're going to be using to tighten everything down and assemble everything. So you can see it's the industry standard kind of knob here, hard plastic top on it, and I believe that's an M8 thread. I do believe. And... On the frame, and this is just a quick example, we'll get closer to look in a minute, they have welded on threaded inserts. Not really an insert, it's just kind of on top, but this is how this will work. Simple enough, it'll be easy to assemble and disassemble things as you go along, or as we go along assembling this and see how it works. Right, so we also get, of course, a bag of bolts. We've got washers, bolts, nuts, different kinds of nuts actually. And obviously these are different sizes. We'll go over the specifics of the sizes as we're assembling it for each piece's requirements. Right. And we're gonna start with this bottom piece here. I'm calling this the seat assembly because this is where the seat is going to sit and the front part of the rig is going to slide in here. So we'll get a closer look at that in the next segment. So I'm calling this the seat part of the frame for the frame assembly and you can see it has these hoops that come up here these are actually obviously tubes welded to the frame here and this is where you put your logo and they put these thin pieces of metal on here and i'm going to do this as a demonstration because because it's something that I've, i discovered and it's you can hear that kind of a rattle So they've spot welded these plates on here, and I'll show you that here, which is typical in the industry. You can see these spot welds, we've got a, a couple of them running around here. Of course, it runs all the way around the bottom, and that's how they put these little plates on it. But you can hear the rattle. But this one actually, well, I guess they're about, this one sounds like a little bit more than the other one. Now, Really, this is not an issue if you're just going to be setting this rig up, putting your wheel and shifter on it, pedals, and off you go. But if you're going to put some tactile, uh, some kind of a tactile device, a uh, butt kicker or something like that, on your rig, then this is where it's going to become a, a concern because then it's going to be rattling all the time. So that's probably going to be pretty annoying after a while, if not right away. What I would do for that is on the inside here of these seams, where this plate is attached to the tube, I would just take some clear silicone or black silicone or something like that and just run a bead of it all the way around. And then take your finger and kind of squish it down, push it down into those seams. And I believe that that would get into the gaps that are causing the rattle. And then once that dries for 24 hours, it, it shouldn't rattle anymore. That's what I would do if I was gonna put some tactile type of device on here. Otherwise, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with it because it probably is not going to make a difference in your everyday driving on this unit. Now, we have some adjustable holes here, and this is going to be used to adjust the front part or the length of the whole rig, if you will. And we'll be adjusting, yeah, we've, we've got some knobs that are going to go in here that are also going to secure it also. 
And yeah, we'll be seeing what we're going to use these for as we build this and as far as I, the way I'm going to build it as we go along. These tubes themselves are two millimeters thick and the tubes on the back are also two millimeters thick and it varies a little bit from tube to tube, but not that much. So it, it averages out to be about two millimeters. So that's what they're using as far as the tubing. It seems strong enough. And of course, with it just sitting here, we can we can push down on it and, and bend it a little bit. But once it's in the rig and everything's tightened together, that's probably not going to be an issue. Probably won't even notice it. We've got two bars in the back here. And these two bars actually receive another bar on the back. And that's for the speaker mounts. And we'll get to that when we get to the speaker mounts. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead, set this down on the concrete over here, or actually on my cardboard. And then we'll bring the front end of this rig up and see what that looks like. Here is the front section of this cockpit, front bottom section. And you can see, obviously, the tube theme is going on with this too. And these are two millimeter thick metal tubes, just like the other tubes on the front part, or rather the rear part. This is the front. And you can see that it's welded on the bottom here on this plate. We have some pretty substantial welding here on the tubes where they meet each other across these sides here. It feels like a very stiff assembly. Actually, this is a stiffer assembly than the, the rear assembly, as we saw before when I was actually kind of bending it a little bit. So we also have this pedal plate up here. And you can see it has a lot of holes in it. This is like Swiss cheese almost. There's so many holes in it. Now, I actually tested this for Thrustmaster pedal set. It fits the Thrustmaster. It fits the Logitech G29 set that I got, which I imagine the 920 is the same. And the older uh, pedal sets from Logitech are probably the same too, if I remember correctly. So they fit. But I did put the Fanatic CSL Elite sets on here, and the holes didn't line up for those. So you have to drill your own holes. Really, you know, not a, not a deal breaker, but it's just drilling some holes in some you know, two millimeter thick plate here, so it's not going to be that hard to do. But yeah, I was surprised that with all these holes in it, that it didn't fit the Fanatic. Um, yeah, I was just a little surprised at that. Of course, we can always build some 80-20 profile platform on here and do what we want to with. But the only thing about this kind of setup on this kind of rig is we're not going to be able to change the rake of the pedals without doing something our own custom fabrication or, or whatever we might need to get the pedals where we want as far as the angle on them. I will give them this, at least it's not flat because most of the Logitech and Thrustmasters and of the Fanatics are kind of laid back pedals and I always end up tilting them forward to try to get a better angle on them when attached to a cockpit. But you know, they're okay when you're sitting at a desk, that laid back angle is actually pretty good. But yeah, when you start getting to a cockpit and you're sitting, trying to sit low with the pedals, you, you definitely need to put some angle on them. So this does that, but it's not adjustable. So yeah, it's a fixed position. It is very solid, like I said. Uh, it, it feels very solid. And of course, the wheel section, the wheelbase section is going to be mounting to this section, which is a good thing that it's nice and solid. It gives me a little more confidence on what kind of a wheelbase that this platform is going to be able to handle. Right, so there's not much else to see here. What we'll do now is just take it over to the rear section. And if you look here, we're actually going to be sliding these tubes. And these tubes are kind of, they're kind of a tube in a tube situation here. See that? So this is going to slide in and we're going to use those knobbed bolts with the knobs on them to cinch everything down. These holes are for accessories and being able to bolt things to the actual cockpit. So what we'll do is go ahead and, again, there's not going to be much assembly on this thing. It's pretty simple. I'm just going to slide it in, and, yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys the results of that when we have it over here slid in with it, you know, tightened up so we can see what it looks like. So putting this unit together is pretty easy, as you might imagine. This front section just slides into the rear section. Now, there are a couple of extra pieces they give you here for an extension, and these are those pieces. And I'll give you a close-up look over here. And you can see that they have a, just like the front of this piece here, it's a smaller piece that will go into the back frame. And of course, the front frame will go over here. That would mean we would need two of these knobs, one here and one here, to cinch it all down. But I've already measured this, and this is actually 135 millimeters extension in length. I could put those on there and use them, 
but I've actually measured based on my other cockpit, my P1 cockpit, and I, I know that I'm not going to need this, that just with the regular pieces together, then I will be having, I will have actually the proper length for me to, yeah, use this rig with no problem. But if you're a taller guy, it's nice to know that they do put these extensions in, and they do give you the extra knobs to cinch them down if you decide to use them. So yeah, not a bad deal really. So we won't be using them though. And of course, I've already got one of the knobs in over there. We just put this one in over here and just get it started. Obviously, we don't want to run it too far down in there, interfere with us putting this in. Now, when you slide this in, it should go in pretty easily, I'm thinking. It looks like it lines up pretty good. And you want them to go in here, just like that. Slide it together. What could be simpler? <laughs> and then, of course, it's just a matter of tightening these things down here. And that's going to secure it together. And there we have it. We've got the bottom section assembled. Again, this is going to go pretty easily, I think. And what we'll do next is go to what the wheelbase assembly is going to be made of. We're going to have actually three pieces for that, for the supports. We're going to have a support on each side of this frame, over here and over here. And they're going to be bolted in these holes. And then we have another long piece of the tubes that are actually going to come up like this and join these two cross pieces. But we'll look at that on the next segment. Now, to get the wheel base mount put together, it has a few pieces. <laughs> it's a little more complicated than just putting the bottom together, which uh, you know is what it is. And this is how we're going to do it, or go about it. At least this is how I'm going to do it. First off, we got this big section here, right? It's curved in the front, and that's going to match the curve on the front of the cockpit, on the bottom section of that cockpit. And you see I've got four holes here. See the holes through there? And we're going to be putting these four M8 bolts. Now, these are M8 by 60 millimeter long bolts. And we also have an accompanying nut, lock nut kind of flange. You've seen these before. They've got the little teeth in them that dig into the sides of the metal to help it keep from coming apart. So we need four of these to go through there. And we'll see that once we're actually assembling it. So once we have this up here, obviously it's going to be kind of sitting like this, right? And the wheel deck part is going to fit with the small piece going back towards the front in between here, like that. And we have two bolts on each side here that this can go into. Let's get a closer look at that. Right? So we're going to have two bolts on each side, M6 bolts going through this to secure it, depending on the height we want it. That's really, we've got three options for our height here. We've got, put this back over here, so it doesn't go anywhere. So we've got three options for height, but the problem here is, well, I don't know if it's a problem, but unfortunately, we don't have any angle adjustment here. I tried to see if I could put like a bolt in here and then a bolt up there and kind of make it angle, but it doesn't work that way. The bolt holes don't line up. Probably drill your own hole if you really wanted to. But yeah, there's not going to be an angle adjustment on this. And, you know, it is what it is. It, you can see this is actually a pretty nice wheel base plate, it seems like. This is a three millimeter, or actually more like two and a half millimeter plate here that's been powder coated. And then we have another plate that's welded on the bottom. See the welds here. So that's been welded to this. And obviously we have the holes that'll fit a Thrustmaster, a Logitech, and you know what? It doesn't look like it has the three-hole pattern for the Fanatic. Right. So, what's going to happen as far as mounting this to this is pretty simple, right? Now we have to mount these cross members. Now these cross members, see if I can stand this up and you guys see this, are going to come up and attach to the side up here, like so, okay? And also, the bolt that's going through this up here is also going to go through and be one of the bolts for securing our wheel plate, one of these two bolts that go in here. Now, to attach this bar to the bottom of our rig is pretty simple. It takes two bolts. First off, I'm going to, and there's another piece here. It's got this piece here. This is a square tube. 
again, two mil. And then we have another flange here. And of course it has two holes in it. And this is a representation, I'm using one of the extensions, as the bottom of our frame over there. And it's pretty simple really, just pick this, set it on top, and you can see that it's going to line up. I think I can show you there, there we go. It's gonna line up with some holes there, and we're gonna put two M6 35 millimeter bolts through that with nuts on the other side. And they give you these nuts here, this will be the actual bolt. This is the socket cap head bolt, M6. And we, they're going to use these little, what I call acorn nuts, right, on the other side. And it doesn't call for any washers for this application. And, yeah, this is kind of stiff, really. I'm trying to kind of just kind of spin it on here, but it's not going on real. There we go. Sometimes they get stiff, you know, or... or the end of it can be bent a little bit on the thread and it's a little tough getting it on at first, but then it goes on. So that's what it's going to look like sticking through there. And we're going to have, again, four of these, obviously, because we're going to need two on this side and we're going to need two on the other side going through this. And the same thing down here, we're going to have two of these going through here. So there's four more of those going through there. Now, once we have this attached, it's going to look like this. Ah, voila. Already done, right? So we've got it attached to our frame, and now this part is going to receive this. And you can it just slides right on top of it like that, which does give us some adjustability for height, but there's not going to be a lot of adjustability for height here because this is already fixed at the front, so it can't, you know, it'll go up a little bit, I suppose, up and down a little bit, but it's going to put tension on it to push it back down. And then we're going to put one of these cinching knobs in the side here, and that's going to control the top part. So it's going to look like, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. There we go. So it won't fall out. And that's what it's going to look like when we're done. Get against my shirt there. It looks a little better. Here we go. See more of it. Yeah. So not that complicated. It's just a little fiddly because we have a lot of things to do. And once it's built, obviously, these two side pieces are supposed to give this lateral support. And it's for, and also some, obviously, some vertical support, too. So I'm not sure about looking at this and all these connections we have here and all these bolts we're going to be putting on here. I'm just not sure how stiff this is going to be. I'm, I'm anxious to find out. But, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take all this stuff and go ahead down to the rig here and go ahead and bolt it on. And you'll, you guys can see how that goes on. So now we've got all the parts down here with the, with the cockpit, and we can get this steering column wheel deck assembly mounted. Now, firstly, I've already got these two square tubes mounted to the side of our rails here for the bottom of the cockpit. I thought I'd go ahead and put these on just so I have a support for this column. Make sure I don't have that too far in there. Okay. Just so I have a support for the center column to go on like that then we'll just pick up the center column and remember i've got four bolts to put in two on each side for the center column and those are going to be m6 by 60 bolts i know i said in the previous segment they're m8s but they're actually m6s and we'll go ahead and do that now and kind of put that right down here and i'm going to put a bolt in on the bottom first like so We'll grab another one, put it towards the top, try to get things kind of lined up here. And yeah, there we go, like that. And then we'll go ahead and get these other guys in. Looks like everything's going in pretty good. With such a big hole, yeah, that's probably why they're using the M6s, because I did try it with the M8s in here, but the M8s didn't line up. And you can see, it, and they weren't long enough, and yeah, it was causing some problems. So now what we've got to do is put our washers and our nuts on these things. And I'll go ahead and get those started. I'm going to keep everything loose until we have everything assembled and all the bolts and nuts and washers in place before we torque it down. Plus, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to use the position that it's in. In other words, I might be tweaking the position once I get a wheelbase on here and I'm sitting down on the seat. So that's why we're kind of going to leave everything loose for now. Right, so 
Here we have the bottom section. The nuts are on, so we can actually move this around. You see I still have some play here down in this area, so I can line things up better on the top. So moving over to the top. All right. So these supports are going to go on the outside of this bar. And depending on where we put these bottom pieces, as far as this way, that's where it's going to bolt up. And I've got it pretty far to the front, it looks like. And again, this is one of those things where you don't know where you're going to end up. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and loosely bolt things together and then wait till I get my seat on. And then I can change things as far as deciding where I, want, I need the wheel to be to be comfortable and get a decent sitting position for racing in. Right. So we got to put the top plate on now. And again, it has two holes on each side. We're going to have two bolts on each side going into this. Remember, one of the bolts is going to be securing this part too. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this up towards the front where the last hole is because that's where everything is sitting. I think I'm just going to go medium as far as I'm not going to sit it down flat. I'm going to put this up. Get this nut off of here. I think I'm just going to have it sitting up one notch. So hopefully these are long enough and everything's going to fit like it should. And there it is. So there's one. And then we come over here and get number two, which is actually, it looks like two of the small hole spaces. See these spaces in here? It looks like it's too wide, and it is. So once we have that on, I can come back here with a nut and go ahead and tighten her up and just snug things up again. We're not going to be making things real tight because I'm, again, guarantee you, I'm going to come over here in the back here and get this side now. I guarantee you this is not going to be the last position that I'm going to be using as far as getting everything dialed in. But it does get the cockpit kind of a, in a symboled spot or a symboled condition, rather, so we can actually make a better judgment call on what we're going to be doing. So there we have it. All four of these bolts are in. And that's the assembly. Now, remember, we can still raise this up a little bit because we've got these pieces down here that can lock it even at a tilt like that, D depending on how much play we've got with those six millimeter bolts in the front and those big holes. And be honest, I'm not crazy about that setup down there. I'd rather see M8s in there because, you know, when you're driving, you know, I could be wrong. Once it all gets cinched up tight, it might be fine. But I just, it just feels to me like it might be better with some more substantial bolts in there. But hey, they're the one that manufactures this, so GT Omega must know that it works. <laughs> All right, so we've got most of it together now. All we've got to do now is get the seat mounted and our speaker mount, which speaker mount is nothing really. I've got that laying right here. In fact, I was going to show you guys that while we were doing this. And it's just this big U yoke looking thing. It has the threaded bolts in here, so we can actually cinch this down with some of these pieces here. And that fits right over here in the back. Well, it's supposed to fit over here in the back. There we go. Like that. So then we have two pieces that we're going to fit on top of this, and we'll look at that when we get to that section. But I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pull the seat out. We'll take a look at the seat that comes with this unit. Now, I think this is the RS9, RS9 seat, and see how that's going to mount to a bracket, and then we mount the whole thing over here. I think that's the way it goes, or maybe we mount the bracket first. Well, anyway, we'll see that in the next segment. Now let's take a look at this RS9 seat. And first off, it has some nice embroidery in the back. It has these huge seatbelt plastic sections here, and it, the vinyl is very stiff. I mean, not so stiff that you can't squeeze it, but it feels like it's pretty tough and it's going to last. And I'll go ahead and spin this around here and we'll look at the front. And again, we have some more embroidering up here for the GT Omega Racing logo. And yeah, it's very smooth in here. It has not a real deep bolster here as far as the wings for your, the support for your sides. Uh, we've got pretty good supports here. And I'm not sure what this is, <laughs> this lump here. In fact, I'll, I got a camera over here, we'll do a close up. And you can see it's kind of like, you know, your legs will obviously be on each, either side of this. It looks like it was an insert that where you could put like a five point or six point harness 
and the bottom part of that harness we could bolt in but if you look on the bottom that's really nothing going on there so yeah it's just a styling type of cue i guess anyway but yeah over here it has this nice red stitching i can turn this around so we can see that right in here everything looks very nicely done I've, I've gone over the seat and i can't really find any problems as far as you know the threads coming out anywhere or loose threads or anything like that everything looks pretty good it has the hinge in it while we're doing the close-up we'll look at that Oops, over here and typical of a hinge seat you would think there would be movement in it um, the, you know, instead of compared to a regular seat that's like a bucket seat that doesn't have the hinge or the adjustments in it but I have to say my, it doesn't have that much movement in it I'll, I'll go to the big camera for this if I'm pushing on this let me turn it sideways I'm kind of pulling on the back here while I'm trying to push down here and I I can't really feel in pushing the other way I can't feel any movement between the back hinge down here in the hinge section between the back and the bottom typically you'll find some movement there in fact I did a review on a next level racing cockpit and the seat they had was yeah it had some definite play in it but this one seems pretty stiff at least and I haven't sat down on it we don't have it mounted and that'll be the ultimate test obviously but right now it's feeling pretty good I'm actually uh, surprised <laughs> pleasantly so but surprised because on these kind of seats you have the the mechanism here is where the big spring is and that's where all the big hardware pieces are and on the other side it's basically a hinge that's along for the ride you see the hinge there we'll go over to the close-up camera too and see if we can get a better look at it there it is so this hinge here is just put together with this pin that's riveted together and let's spin it around a little bit there and yeah it's typically you're not going to you know this is just along for the ride it's not going to be real stiff and they'll have play in it but right now like i said before even in the close-up i put my weight down the front and i'm trying to push this i can see a little bit feel a little bit but not as much on some seats that i've had in here and like i said before that next level racing street was probably one of the worst that i've had as far as flexing the back of it even though when you're driving it really doesn't make that much difference i guess right so good looking seat here i like it you know i don't really have anything to complain about i haven't used it yet because we don't have it bolted on and what we're going to do is to mount this get a little bracket over here this is the bracket that's going to go on the bottom of the seat right and we're going to bolt the bracket to the seat first and then we're going to take the whole thing over to the rig and bolt that up from the bottom and i'm going to go ahead and flip this up if i can without breaking anything or toss anything over the side like this right so this has a slider on it as you can see which is nice nice to have a slider on the seat because once we have it there then of course we can adjust it back and forth underneath it actually looks pretty clean and of course we can see the hog rings here clamping down all the vinyl and again even underneath I'm, i was looking for places on the vinyl that might be you know sticking out somewhere or have you know just looking kind of rough if you will but they've done a real good job on this seat and for the total price of this rig i'm, I'm actually uh, i have to say i'm kind of impressed here with what this seat looks like now we're going to take this and mount this piece to these sliding rails they got a hole here and they got holes down here probably this sliding hole here is i'm thinking what i'm going to be using even though you could probably use these three down here too and yeah what we're going to do is come back and have everything set up so we can mount this on here and that's going to mean moving these back and forth and you can actually see i don't know if you can notice that here this one is sticking out less than this one is over here which is typical you know of this kind of thing but all you got to do is kind of pull this and you should be able to do them independently and there you go see i can actually move that independently of the one over here and get it kind of lined up and hopefully the teeth will line up and everything will click in you saw it click in there it's still yeah i guess that's about even it's hard to tell until you really get it actually on the seat but yeah, as far as far as mounted and see make sure nothing's crooked but yeah so far so good we'll come back and we'll have our bolts all set up and everything and we'll see how this bolts to the bottom of the seat then we'll take it over to the rig and get it bolted up so let's go ahead and get our mounting frame bolted up 
And again, we're going to be using these holes here. Yeah, right here. And it's going to go up on the frame like this. And this is going to give us plenty of room on this side to be able to let's see if we get that straight there. Yeah. See if I can, if we can actually get the other bolts when we mount it to the actual cockpit. And that's going to be hanging out so we can have easy access to it. At least that's the idea. So first off, with these rails on this slider assembly, we need to get them out far enough out here so we can get the bolt in easily and don't have to try to put our finger in here and do all this other crazy stuff. This bolt, or rather bolt, not bolt, but this is the nut that we're going to be using. And we've already seen that. It's got the flange in it. It's kind of blown out a little. Forgive the light there, but I just want to make sure it's bright enough that you guys can see over here what was going on. But this will not fit into the channel over here. All right, it's too big. So we're going to have this on the other side of the bracket. But this socket head cap bolt will be fine. And this is a six millimeter top here. It's an eight millimeter thread. And these are the 35 mil length. So that means it's long enough to go through here and go through our bracket material tubing and still be able to get the nut on it. So what we want to do, we still can't get this in here though because of the angle on it. It's just, you know, it's all stuck up under here in this whole assembly. So easy enough. And this is a handy tool to have, a little hook tool. And what I'll do is I'll actually put the spring over like I'm trying to adjust the seat back and forth and I'll pull the slider out or sliders out where I need them. So I'll just kind of yank on them a little bit and you see how they come out. And you can see when they're not connected together. There are actually individual units over here, so I can move them individually. But I want to get them even eventually. I'm, I'm going to kind of look over here and see where they're at. And I think that's close. Now what I want to do is go ahead and tap them until they snap back in. See how it snapped in there? And this one here will do the same thing when I snap it. There it goes. So now the whole spring assembly inside is is snapped down into one of the teeth here so that everything is solid again and the seat won't move. Probably a little bit of play in there, but basically the seat's not going to move. Now, the only thing is that I get them even. <laughs> and that's really the only way to tell is to put this up here and take a look at it. Uh, and one might be a little bit further forward than the other one. Let's see. And what I'll do is I'll line them up here. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. This top one needs to come back another half an inch or so, so no big deal. All we do is pull this back again, and I'll just kind of put it like that, and then hit it again until it pops again like that. So they should be locked, and hopefully they're even now. So let's take a look. Let's see. That's looking much better. And my back holes, make sure they're lining up. Yep. All right, so everything's looking good now. So, I still have room down here to be able to get this bolt through. So, I'll take my bolt and just pop it through like this. And the head of this bolt is going to be riding inside the channel, but it's, it's not high enough inside this channel that it's going to be hitting the other bolt that's got the other side of this channel bolted to the bottom of the seat. So, everything will miss each other, right? So, that's what you want. You don't want them hitting, obviously. You're not going to get very far sliding your chair back and forth if they're hitting. So I'll go ahead and put this one on the up here, too. Now, it's just a matter of getting our bracket up here and getting the bolts in. Let's see how we're doing this. Like this, okay. Sometimes I get disoriented when I'm trying to do different angles here so you guys can see what I'm doing. It's a lot easier to do this stuff when you're not videotaping it. Right. We're trying to make videos. So there we have it. Now these bolts are hanging loose down here. We'll just take a couple of nuts. Spin them on there. And I'm going to go ahead and, yep, I'm going to check real quick before I do this. But I want to go ahead and tighten this down so I don't have to keep pushing it back and forth to tighten it. I don't have to, but I kind of want to because if it's, my holes are looking good here, there's really no reason for me not to. And... They're looking pretty good there. It kind of wants to fall down a little bit. You know what? I think I'll wait. I'm just going to wait to tighten these up. I'll just have to, you know, shove it back and forth a couple times. Now that I have the bracket on there, I can kind of just grab it here when I take the spring tensioner off and push 
<laughs> well, let's see, they're still kind of moving independently. But the whole idea is I'm trying to push it. I'm going to push the whole thing over. So I can get those bolts in. There we go. That might actually do it. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to try to get the bolt back in here. There we go. Yeah, actually, I think I've got these two tight now, so let's take them back out. So this is kind of a trial and error thing when you're doing this stuff. I'm actually going to try to loosen this up a little bit. So I got them, even with my fingers, I got them too tight to play around with. So yeah, I'm a little surprised by that, actually. Okay, let's try this again, Barry. There we go. Okay, so now these back rails are far enough out for me to get the bolts in. So let's go around this side and see if that's true. No, actually, I need to go a little bit further, it looks like, if I can. Now remember, there is limits to the travel on this as far as it can go back. So we're going to try to get it to go a bit further back. Make a lot of noise. It means you know you're doing something. I think that might have it. Yeah, I think I can get my bolt in there now. And I kind of just kind of lean this out so I can get my bolts in. And then I'll just kind of bring the bracket in on top of the bolts as I'm bringing it in like that. Okay. Bolt is in there. Got one in there. So we just put our nuts on. Everything's going smoothly. Well, kind of smoothly. <laughs> So now, the only thing we want to make sure of now is that we have, and we can actually, once we have this seat mounted, we can actually, you know, play around with it some more as far as these holes lining up with the top of the cockpit rails that this is going to be sitting on. So now I should be able to bring them back together now. And now they're going to kind of stay together, the rails are, because we have obviously kind of bolted them together now. And I'm going to go ahead and snug this up a little bit. I might actually leave these loose as I put it on the cockpit, too, so that'll give me a little wiggle room on the cockpit holes because a lot of times these things aren't, you know, drilled perfectly. All right, so that's about... There we go. So now, again, it's a little loose, but it's tight enough to hold it in position, and that's really what I'm trying to do here. And now what we'll do is just go over to the actual rig and these bolts, you can see the holes up here, are far enough up from these bolts that if we set this on the round tubing, these should not interfere with the tubing. They'll be inside, so both on both sides. So you can see how far out these holes are compared to these. So hopefully we don't have any interference with the bolts as we put it on the top. So what we'll do is go over there and set it down over there on the cockpit and see how it looks. So now we've got our seat mounted. Everything's nice and tight. The sliders are working well, so we can go back and forth. And I think this is going to be a pretty good seating position for me. I have raised this up a little bit, but everything's still kind of loose. I'm still playing around with what the final position will be. But yeah, the seat feels pretty tight. And I have to say that the flex on the back of this seat is very minimal, especially for a, a hinge seat, because I've had some in here before in the SRG that were really not very very good at all they're kind of floppy even but there is movement i'm sure you can see it but it's just not as much slop as i expected uh, this this one's pretty tight and i guess this is just the luck of the draw when it comes to this kind of thing but yeah the seat feels pretty comfortable i think that uh this will be fine yeah for doing the driving and i did a quick little b-roll here i'm showing you now of the actual uh, bolts and how it's attaching to the top of this cockpit on those rolled bars. So we go around and look at the other side there and underneath. So yeah, easy enough. Four bolts bolted right in. Everything got, once I tightened it up, everything was great. And yeah, I'm pretty happy the way this seat turned out. I'm pretty impressed with it actually. It's, it's really caught me a little bit by surprise, the seat quality and how well it's actually mounted now to the frame. Yeah, it feels very solid sitting in it. Yeah. So what we'll do next is get to the shifter mount. Now we can take a look at the shifter assembly and how that's going to work. First off, we have this bar here, which is a square tube. We've got a little flange here. 
and you can see we have two holes for some bolts. And what we're going to do is take this over to the frame, and if you remember the uprights that are actually coming on the sides of the frames over to the steering wheel column, this is going to mount to one of those. And because I'm in North America, I'm going to be mounting it on the right side. And there's holes on those square tubes that are going to accept bolts that will bolt this up to the tube. So we'll have the tube basically sticking on there like that, right? They're bolted on to the tube over there. Now, once this is bolted on, then we have this little nifty piece. And this is a square tube fitting. You can see it kind of has opening here and then an opening over here. And two of these knobs with the M8 bolts to cinch down on it. And this will go on like this, right? Because this is already mounted. And then we can tighten that down if we want, or just snug it down just for demonstration purposes. And then this bar is going to go in. Now you can make it go this way or this way, depending on which way. Let me get over here. You can go this way or this way, depending on which way you want to go as far as where the shifter position is. So it does give us a little flexibility as far as that's concerned. And then you will actually lower it down to where you need it to be. And again, clamp it down with the knob screw. Now we have the actual shifter plate itself. And it's a piece of three millimeter steel powder coated. And I'm not sure the pattern on this. I think this pattern here might fit the Thrustmaster or the G29 Logitech. I'm not sure, but you can see it has a lip here. Right, so whatever we put on there and clamp on here has got to be able to clear this lip and get under there and do that. I, or maybe we can actually directly mount this with some bolts, but we'll just have to wait and see. I think I'm going to run my Thrustmaster TH8A on this and just see, I might just end up clamping it on there if these holes don't match up, but we'll see that when we get there. But also, once this is mounted again on our rig, and there's my post back there that's supporting the steering wheel and the wheelbase, this will actually slide on like this or like this. I suppose either way it works. depends on what you want to do. And then, of course, we're just going to tighten this down. Now, this gives us an ability to actually fine-tune a little bit where we want as far as laterally the shifter to be. Now, of course, the further we get out on the end of this tube, the more flex you're going to have because the more torque you're putting on this in this section here. So the closer you have it, the better it's going to be for stiffness. Now, again, that'll again all depend on where your shifter ends up being mounted. So that's what it's going to look like, something like this. Look, it's, it is a, quite an assembly, actually, the way this is done. And yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of pieces. It's not that complicated, but yeah, at least it gives us a lot of adjustability range. I, I do commend GT Omega for that, because yeah, we can do a, a lot as far as getting it tuned and dialed in the way we like it. So what we'll do next is go ahead and just go over there and get this puppy mounted. So now we've got the shifter mounted. And as you can see, we have, if we loosen these guys up here, of course, everything starts to fall apart there. We have this square tube mounted with two eight millimeter bolts into this cross member, support cross member. So you could actually lift this up a little higher if you want to, but it depends on where the shifter is going to be. And I don't have the shifter mounted yet, so I don't know exactly where I'm going to want it to be. So again, we just put the whole assembly on here. And with limitations to the front hitting the bar there, obviously. Now, if it was higher, it wouldn't do that. It would actually go past it. But when I'm sitting here, I'm trying to figure out where I want that shifter to be. And it's not going to be way up here. It's definitely going to be down somewhere down here, I would imagine. And yeah, probably close to this support as I can get because, you know, all the pressure on this is going to be this way, pulling back and pushing forward like that. So that's where we've got to have a good connection. And that's going to be, let me go ahead and raise this back up. It's easier to get to these knobs if things are, let me just actually put this back a little bit. So yeah, now we can crank down on the knob and get it tight. So yeah, all the pressure is going to be on the shifter coming back this way. Now I can actually go down lower if I want. And that seems to be pretty good. Not too bad, actually. But you can see I still have some, some movement. Not everything is cinched down tightly as far as the steering wheel, you know, the wheelbase and everything else. But actually, I might 
turn this out the other way. It's actually hitting my knee here with this bar. So I can actually take this and turn it around like so. And then that won't be hitting my knee anymore. Right. So yeah, that's more like it. I think that's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be even lower than that, though. I'm thinking somewhere around here. But it does have, as you can see, a lot of adjustability in it. And that's that's really what's important and key here, I think, for us to, to note, is you do have a lot of adjustability. And it, it looks like it's going to be a stiff enough, especially for a frame in this price point or a cockpit at this price point. I think it's going to be just as stiff as any of the others at the same kind of price points. So what we'll do next is get to the keyboard mount. We'll look at the keyboard assembly now as far as the mount goes. And if you watch the segment on the shifter assembly, this part of it is exactly the same. This part of the bar, which is a square tube with the flange on the back, is going to go up against one of the, in this case, the left side of this cockpit's upright support bar that's supporting the steering wheel or wheelbase assembly. So that's going to be bolted to that. Once we have this bolted up, then we're going to take this and slide it on there like this. All right, and then we can adjust how far in and out that goes or this assembly goes, which the keyboard's going to be on top of, and regulate that with, of course, our little adjustment knobs or tightening knobs. And once we have that on, then we can actually take the keyboard elbow here, and it has a little plate welded to the top. See little spot welds on the bottom there at the top, see? And a bolt's going to go through that. And that's what's going to hold the keyboard tray. And that's going to go into this guy, right? Very simple. Slides down and all like that. And then based on, you can actually swivel it around and get it out of your way. And we'll just go ahead and snug that up just a little bit here. Keep them flopping all around. And that's going to be sitting like this. Well, actually, it'll be sitting like this. Because if I'm the driver, and it's going to be on my left side, the keyboard will be over here. The tray is going to attach the top of this by means of this bolt that they've got. <laughs> and you can see there's a, actually a, an attachment plate that's been welded on here. See the little spot welds there. And the bolt's been welded to the bottom of that. You can see that through there. Then we have a nylon washer, which is going to facilitate this thing actually floating around and be able to turn it once we have it mounted. And this, of course, we have a... Actually, this is the only... Let me show you this. This is a nylon safety nut right here. It's got the little blue piece in there. And then, of course, we have that plastic washer that's going to allow it to rotate on top of this. And the idea, of course, is once this is up like this, in this position, then the keyboard tray will simply just slide down in it. And this, by the way, it's a very large keyboard tray. My keyboard's like maybe this much of it. So it's, it's, it'll basically hold any keyboard tray you can want, I imagine. So now that's going to put some weight on this right here. So I would want this, I think, if I could, if it doesn't mess me up as far as using the keyboard, I think I would want this as far back that way against the frame where it mounts to the frame as possible to, you know, because of the leverage it's going to have. My keyboard's not very heavy, so it's not a, that's not a worry. And by the way, when you put this in, when I put this in, the nylon washer is going to still be on this bolt. So I would do it this way. Get this thing figured out here, Barry. And we'll slide it on. Nut on the bottom. And that's the way it's going to sit. So with that nylon on there, this is going to rotate pretty freely. Even if you actually, well, it depends, I guess, on how hard, or how tight, rather, you get this bottom nut down here. And you don't want it flopping all over the place. But then when it's loose here, too, then we have, it, it can swing away, right? So we'll see that once it's mounted, how it swings around. Actually, it's a pretty good little assembly here. I kind of like this. Uh, right up there with the uh, shifter assembly. A lot of adjustment in it. Plenty of room for the biggest keyboard you could imagine. In fact, you could probably put a track mouse, or trackball rather, or a mouse on there along with it. So maybe that's why it's so wide. But yeah, I think that, that'll hold anything that we could possibly want. So now what we'll do is just go over to the cockpit and get this mounted up and see what it looks like. So we have our keyboard tray mounted now, and actually it's a little bit on the high side, and it also has a kind of an angle. I don't think you can see it that well here. It kind of slopes down, but that changes a little bit. Let's get this in the right orientation. 
you can actually obviously swivel it right into where you need to use your typing. And the reason it's high, I have it on the lowest uh, part of the bar that you can get these bolts on, but the whole bar assembly is actually lifted up. And because I'm, I'm trying to guess where I'm going to have my wheelbase, I'm not sure yet. So it might come back down, but it's got obviously a bunch of clearance between your legs. And yeah, it seems to work pretty well. And then when you get it to position you want, you just kind of tighten these two big knobs up here and that'll keep it from moving around, even though this can still move, but you can actually tighten the nut down there to, to make it harder to move against that nylon washer that we saw previously when we were looking at the parts for this thing. So yeah, actually it, it does okay. You just gotta loosen these every time you want to bring your keyboard in, which is not that big of a deal, especially when you, most of the time you're gonna want it out of your way, I imagine, while you're driving. But there you go, there's the keyboard mount, and the only thing left, I believe, is going to be the rear speaker mount, which is just kind of like a one-piece assembly, so not much there, but we'll take a look at it. Now we're going to put the speaker stand for the rear of this cockpit. Pretty simple thing. We've got the two knobs in here to tighten it against the two tubes that are sticking up in the rear. On the top here, we have some threaded inserts that we're going to be putting the plates on that allows us to mount the speakers, obviously. And we'll go ahead and slide this down. Make sure I don't have any interference there. You gotta kinda rock it back and forth and it goes all the way down. Or you can adjust it. That does give us a little bit of adjustability, obviously. But I'm just gonna get snug it up the way it is right here. And we have the speaker plates here and the screw that we're gonna be putting in. And the screw has is a flathead screw. See how flat that is? And we have kind of a recessed pressed in. Looks like they you know put it under a press and press that in and that will sit nice and flush. And then we can mount our speaker. We have a quarter inch hole in the back right here that's gonna allow us to get a screw into a speaker if that speaker does have a quarter inch hole. But easy enough, we just put this up here like this and hopefully our threads are nice and clean, and they are. So we can just put one there. And we'll come over and put one on this side. It's kind of nice that they've actually added this because it's always seems like, where am I going to put a speaker <laughs> when we're looking at these things? And yeah, this actually gets it done pretty nicely, I think. And of course, putting the speakers in the front, you can put them just about anywhere. But yeah, this is nice, and we can actually raise it up a little bit in fact, you could probably mod something if you needed to go even higher because we've already got a nice thread in here. It's an M6 thread, and we might be able to put another pole or some kind of extension or 80-20 profile or something like that. But yeah, there we go. Speaker mounters mounted, and this cockpit is built. Now we'll do the final thoughts on what we think about this cockpit. Final thoughts on GT Omega's Pro Racing Cockpit Basic. This review is the first in a two-part video series for this cockpit known as the build review. I will also be publishing a setup review in the second video. I would rate the build difficulty of this cockpit as, well, easy. Everything went together without having to modify any parts, and all fasteners were present. So, no trips to the local hardware store, thank goodness. <laughs> all the parts arrived in a very good condition, actually, and they were packed with plenty of foam protection. I do think this is one of the better kits out there for the price point. Speaker stands and keyboard attachments usually come at additional cost on some other similar price kits. This kit came with the RS9 seat. Now, I do like this seat, as it's finished very well and has minimum flex between the seat back and bottom sections, which really is not an easy feat with an adjustable back seat. At a total cost of $450, including shipping, this seems to be a pretty good deal so far, but of course, I still have to attach a wheelbase, shifter, and pedals to this cockpit, and then give it a proper driving test before a final verdict can be reached. So, make sure you check out the second video of this review called The Setup. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.